You are listening to the Keep the Weight Off podcast with Dr. Angela, episode number 101. Welcome to the Keep the Weight Off podcast, where we bust all the dieting myths and discover not just how to lose weight, but more importantly, how to keep it off. We go way beyond the food, and we use science and psychology to give you strategies that work. And now your host, Dr. Angela Zekman. All right. Hey, everyone, and welcome to the podcast this week. It's episode 101, and I am still glowing from last week's 100th podcast. I don't know about you, Marshall. <laughs> I'm just like, yeah. I mean, I just can't even believe. I never thought we would ever have got, well, I never imagined I'd ever have a podcast. And then to have a podcast that has 100 episodes, that's crazy. I mean, that's I know. Insanity. I can't believe that we have had a hundred topics to talk about. That's, yeah, that's I know. insane. Yeah. <laughs> well, weight loss is a big topic. So for sure. So can you imagine having 200 podcasts at one point in time? I, yeah. I can now. I mean, I, I didn't at first, but, but yeah, I can uh-huh. now because there are, there are so many topics to talk about. Yeah. Yeah. Well, people do. People do more than 200 mm-hmm. podcasts. So right. we'll see what happens. Right. We just, <laughs> I know you just keep coming up with things and we just keep talking about uh-huh. them. So uh-huh. yeah. we just keep like, on going. It's, yeah, <laughs> it's, it's a never ending journey. So, mm-hmm. well, this week I wanted to talk about our thinking beca- and I'll, I'll explain why. In the Empowered Weight Loss Membership, we're in the process of learning about how our thoughts create our reality. And we're becoming more adept at thinking on purpose. And so that's what I, that's why I really wanted to bring this up. This, that's actually the theme of the entire membership really is because everything starts with a thought. And so our thoughts create our feelings and our feelings are going to motivate us to action or they may cause us to not have an action. And that's what creates our results. And so everything starts with a thought. The problem is that most of us are not aware of what we're thinking. So we don't even realize that we're thinking thoughts that are not serving us and that are actually creating results that we don't want. So that is why this is so important. A lot of us have these thoughts that are just running around in the background in our head that we're not even aware of. And so I've alluded to this a lot in previous podcasts, but I want to really hone in on it this week because I've been noticing that I personally have a lot of thoughts that are not helpful and may actually be harmful. And when I use the word harmful in this case, what I mean is that these thoughts are not, these thoughts are creating results that I don't want and they're not creating the results that I do want. So when I say harmful thoughts, that's what I mean. Harmful in, as opposed to helpful. They're not helpful. <laughs> okay. So right. I want to make sure I make that clear. Does that make sense? Yep. Makes sense to me. Okay. So for example, I was meditating one morning and I just couldn't get my brain to shut up. It was just like, have you ever tried to meditate, Marshall? <laughs> okay. I've tried to meditate and I really do have a hard time getting my brain to shut up. It's it's really uh-huh. hard for me to meditate because I literally do have ADHD <laughs> and <laughs> I, I struggle with, um, you know, calming my brain. So yeah, it's, yeah, yeah, it's, it's hard. It's hard for people with ADHD. It's hard for people without ADHD too. Yeah, so. right, right. I can, I can imagine. <laughs> I mean, our brains are just going, you know, like they're trained. So, so what I do is I focus on my breathing and there are all different kinds of ways to do this. But what I, the routine that I use is to, I breathe in for a count of three And then I breathe out for a count of five. Other people like to do what's called square breathing, where you breathe in for a count of four and you hold for a count of four. And then you breathe out for a count of four and you hold for a count of four. And you can envision tracing a square in front of you while you're doing it. Does that make sense? Yes. Okay. I have tried that too. I have tried that too. And then I also, Jane, actually, Jane, if you're out there listening, thank you for that because she's the one who taught me that. Mm-hmm. She knows who she is if she's listening. And then also, yeah. um, I another solution for my brain is I do guided meditation. So that that is helpful. Ah, yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So the goal here is to slow down 
all of these thoughts that we're thinking all the time so that we can attain a sense of peace and detachment. Okay. So that's the goal, except often for me, I just notice that I'm getting antsy. <laughs> I'm mm-hmm. like, I love meditation, but there are all these thoughts that are going through my head. And I remember a, f- a few days ago, it was a weekend day and I was meditating and these thoughts kept coming and they were along the lines of, okay, what am I going to accomplish today? Should I, I should go clean the kitchen. I should go do the laundry. I should clean the cat litter box. I should plan a vacation. I should call this friend. I should finish this online course and I should implement what I'm learning and I should do this and I should do that. And I would just get more and more agitated. And sometimes I just end up feeling completely incapable and unproductive. And then I want to just go hide under a rock somewhere. (laughs) It's like, has that ever happened to you? Like, yeah, should, what a coincidence. Should, should, That's should, exactly what happens uh, to my brain, too. <laughs> when, when I meditate. It's like a, this pile of, of crap yeah. just piling on my brain uh, of like things I that know. I need to do. <laughs> yeah. Right. Yeah. Like, there's better things I should be doing with my yeah. time. So, yeah. So, I think this might be why people sometimes don't like the idea of meditation because they're worried that they'll feel like they're wasting their time. Except that. Because I was meditating and I was actually trying to release thoughts, I noticed all of those should thoughts. You know, I I call Mm -hmm. them the should thoughts. I should do this. I should do that. And so how would I have never ever noticed all of these should thoughts if I hadn't taken the time to at least attempt to quiet my mind with some gentle breathing exercises, right? So that's what made me question, like, where do all these should thoughts come from anyway? Like, what's wrong with taking a little time to just be? Why do I think I should be doing all these things instead of just being? I mean, I don't think my cat's sitting around thinking these kinds of thoughts. Like, can you imagine my cat thinking I should thoughts? (laughs) Or any animal for that matter? (laughs) I think my cat's thinking I should take a nap. (laughs) Yeah, exactly. (laughs) I suppose if there's something threatening them, like, there would be an I should defend myself thought. Or if they're hungry, there would be an I should go get some food thought. Or I don't think, but I don't think there's this underlying thought that feels something like I'm not enough going on for my cat. No (laughs) self-judgment, I don't think. (laughs) I know, but that's what was causing me to feel so agitated that morning. Like I just kept thinking I'm not enough. Like I need to be doing something else to whatever, prove my worthiness or something. I don't know. You know, another thing I do, I just thought of this, is Mm -hmm. if there's like, and and this could go back like 20 years, I'm not even kidding. If there is like Mm -hmm. a situation that, or an encounter that I had with somebody that I didn't think that went right, like I will pick it apart and like I should have said this or I should have done that better or I could have said that, yeah, like I, I do that to myself too, like. So, so stupid, but I just thought of that. (laughs) I don't know why I do that, but I do. Yeah, that's true. You know, like I should have said something differently or I should have done something differently. Something along those lines. Yeah. 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 That happens all the time. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. And so I just want all of us to become much more aware of these thoughts that we're thinking that are actually really harmful. And they're the thoughts that say, I'm not enough. And in order to be enough. I should be doing something different. Mm -hmm. That's actually a very harmful thought, okay? And so this is the beauty of doing this thought work is that you get to discover these types of thoughts and then correct them, okay? (laughs) So, So let's say the thought is, I should be doing the dishes. Essentially, I'm thinking it's not okay to sit here and meditate. I can't just be, I should be doing something productive. And the feeling that is generated by that thought is one of agitation. And that I'm just talking about my own experience here. So, but really beneath that feeling of agitation is a feeling of shame, if I'm honest. It's like, it's not okay to just be, I have to be busy doing something that's going to create results. So this thought, I should be doing the dishes, is causing me to feel this low grade sense of shame. And so think about what do I do when I feel shame? Well, I can get demoralized and I can lose my motivation and I can become sluggish and I can ruminate about what a bad person I am and how, how I can fix myself. 
And what are the results to me of all of that? I end up unhappy and I don't get a lot done. And I basically just prove to myself that I'm not enough the way I am, right? Yeah. So this thought that says, I should be doing the dishes, turns out to be a very harmful thought because it gets me nowhere, right? It doesn't help me feel good about myself at all, which is kind of the opposite of what you think, right? You'd think I should be doing the dishes would be a helpful thought, but it turns out to be actually quite harmful. Isn't that interesting? Oh my gosh. I just like, I just went through this like a whole year of doing that to myself. And all that happened to me Mm -hmm. is I got more anxious and more depressed and more Mm -hmm. anxious and more depressed. And, Mm -hmm. and then, you know, I started using unhealthy coping skills to deal with the Mm -hmm. anxiousness and the depression. Mm -hmm. And then pretty Mm -hmm. soon, you know, I got nowhere except for into a dark hole. And, you know, and of course that what, what ended up happening is, you know, I, had to go get therapy because yeah. I didn't know how to pull myself out of it. And it was just, right. you know, it was, it was all because of these harmful thoughts. Yeah. 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 Mm-hmm. So we all have all these thoughts going through our heads all the time. And it's this constant litany of thoughts that would seem to be motivating us. Yeah. It would seem to be helping us to become better people, but they in fact turn out to be quite harmful. And so if you think about what happens if this goes on for years and years and decades unchecked, Mm -hmm. we feel like the only way to escape these constant critical thoughts is to distract ourselves with TV. Bingo. Or some sort of food treat or alcohol or Mm -hmm. some other drug or some sort of buffer. You know, like I know that I pick up my phone an awful lot more than I'd like to be. And why is that? It's because I'm feeling restless and bored. Because the thoughts I'm thinking are generally pretty self-critical thoughts. Thoughts that would seem to be productive, but actually turn out to be quite harmful. Make sense? Yeah, definitely. So what do you do? What do you do? Now, what's the secret to getting this fixed? How, what do you do about it? Well, I think awareness is the first step. Actually, awareness is the first step to making change of any kind. (laughs) So becoming aware of what's happening. So If you're not already meditating, just sit down and try to meditate for five minutes. Just clear your head by focusing on your breathing, or you can focus on some sort of guided meditation and then see what thoughts turn up. You'd be surprised at what your brain does when you just try to calm it down. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. They, you know, your particular thoughts might not be I should thoughts at all. My guess is that they'll be self-critical in some way. I don't think any of us have any idea of all of the self-critical thoughts that we think all day long. So let's say you're meditating and you notice some thoughts. Well, after your meditation, just write them down, okay? Put them on a piece of paper so that you notice that these thoughts are not, they're just something that's going through your brain. They're just a sentence in your brain and you write it down, and then you can make a decision. There it is outside of you. It's not part of you. It's not in your brain anymore. It's on a piece of paper. And then you can ask yourself, what does this thought feel like? How does this thought make me feel? And be super honest. Was it a thought that uplifted you and that gave you a positive feeling emotion? Or did you have some sort of negative emotional response to that thought? So then if the thought that you're thinking doesn't make you feel good, Ask yourself if that's something you want to continue to think. You might decide you actually don't want to continue to think those thoughts after all. Does that make sense? Yes. This is great. Yeah. So do you think that that is a process that could be beneficial for you, Marsha? Like if you were to actually sit down and write the thought down? Yes. I wish I would have known about this a long time ago. (laughs) (laughs) Like. Uh, Would have saved me a lot of of years of therapy. (laughs) If we could just learn this when we were five or six years old. Yeah, like, definitely. Oh, wait yeah. a minute. What mm-hmm. was that thought? And then what if one of our parents or teachers s- s- tells us a thought, you know, you know mm-hmm. what, mommy, that thought didn't make me feel so good. I don't think I want to think that thought. <laughs> but can you imagine? <laughs> that would be, yeah, I wish I wish that boy. I would have known this a long time ago because like I said, I mean, then you take this, you know, you take these thoughts and you, you keep them going for many, many years and you take them into adulthood uh-huh. and then, yeah. And then pretty soon, yeah. you know, then you're buffering with all these other things and you don't know why. Yeah. And you know, then you end yeah. up in therapy, then you end up in therapy, then you figure it out. But 
And you end up going on diet after diet after yeah, diet. Yeah, diet after, after diet. diet after diet. Yes, exactly. So uh-huh. this so yeah. listen up, folks, yeah. because this is a way <laughs> <Listen> to <up. laughs> Yeah. <laughs> this is a way to yeah. <laughs> to figure it out and fix it. I'm just imagining, you know, so many of us as we were growing up, our parents and teachers used shame to motivate us, you know. Oh yeah. Think about it like that. Like how often were were we told to be we were trained to be ashamed. Yeah, you should be um, ashamed of yourself. Yeah. How often did you hear that? Yeah. Constantly. <laughs> yeah. Right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, can you imagine a, a young child? Well, mommy, you know what? Shame doesn't really help me. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Shame doesn't help me. Could you maybe yeah. correct me in a different way, mommy? <laughs> Right. (laughs) Could you maybe not use shame? Could you maybe help me understand like what the consequences of that action were so that maybe I could make a decision to change it on my own without you shaming me for it? (laughs) Wouldn't that be great? Well, and then my parents Uh, would say, well, that's the way we were raised. So, as if that's yeah. some sort of yeah. great, great yeah. excuse. Yeah. yeah. But I mean, they, you know, they, they don't know yeah. any different because, you know, it's been going on for that's generations. Basic. So, yeah, yeah. So this, you yeah. know, so if we, if we would have known, if we all would have known different. So, so this is a way, you know, mm-hmm. this is, these are, these are tools now that we can use now, but, yeah, um, exactly. you know, but mom, if exactly. you're listening, I don't blame you. Yeah. Yeah. My mom would be listening from heaven and, and, uh, <laughs> she understands now I'm sure. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> and, and we don't, we don't, we really don't want to blame our parents and our educators for using shame to correct our behavior because they didn't, they weren't trained any better and nobody really understood all this stuff until very recently. So. Oh, and it didn't, and definitely it didn't take my mom to, for, for me to feel shame. I mean, like I learned it from so many other places and just, you yeah. know, in, in magazines and television and mm-hmm. comparing yourself to other people and, you know, mm-hmm. all, all of the other ways that, you know, we, we, yeah. we learn self-criticism. So, yeah, exactly. So I want all of us listening to this podcast to begin to notice the thoughts that you're thinking. And if you discover that they're actually harmful thoughts, just start becoming aware of them. Because slowly and gradually, you can shift this. It's not going to happen overnight, but becoming aware of this is the first step. And please don't go into self-flagellation, meaning beating yourself up. If you notice that you're thinking a lot of negative thoughts and shooting all over yourself, is what I like to say, you're shooting all over yourself. Mm -hmm. It's really normal. Our primitive brains are super critical of ourselves. And most of us were trained by parents and educators who use shame to motivate us. And so that's pretty common. So you don't want to be beating yourself up about it. You don't want to get into this rabbit hole of beating yourself up about how much you beat yourself up. (laughs) That can happen too. Mm -hmm. We just want to start noticing what's happening in our own brains so that we can correct it. And I also want you to know that this isn't easy. And if you want help and if you want to work with a community of people who are all focusing on losing weight and keeping it off and working on discovering what they're thinking, please, please, please join us in Empowered Weight Loss. That's the membership that I have. It's very reasonably priced and we can get you going and get you starting to recognize some of these patterns so that you can kindly, gently correct yourself and start thinking thoughts that are helpful and not harmful. If you're interested in this, just go to journeybeyondweightloss.com forward slash yes, and that will get you to the sign up page and we will see you on the inside. Okay. So anything else, Marcia? I guess, you know, I, I should have jumped in probably earlier, but I just wanted to sum it up like this. So if you're a person that is buffering with food, if you're an emotional eater Mm -hmm. and Mm -hmm. you are self-critical, and these thoughts are a lie. You're, you're meant for better and you can do better. Mm-hmm. And if you need help mm-hmm. with that, that's what, that's mm-hmm. what Empower Weight Loss is all about. So right. just if, yeah. if you need help with this, this, this is what mm-hmm. this program is about. So yeah. join this community yeah. and, and help mm-hmm. yourself and, and you're meant for better. So that's what we have to offer here. And that's, that's all I wanted to say about this. That's great. Yeah, that's a good way. That's a good way to say it. You are meant for better. We're all meant for better than yeah. having all of these. Don't believe the bullshit that your brain is telling you. It's, it's a lie. Point. 
<laughs> okay. All right, everyone. Have a great week and we will see you next week. Take care. Bye-bye. Goodbye, everybody. Hey, if you really want to lose weight and keep it off for good, your next step is to sign up for Dr. Angela's free weight loss course, where you're going to learn everything you need to get started on your weight loss journey the right way. Just head over to journeybeyondweightloss.com slash free course to sign up. Also, it would be awesome if you could take a few moments and write a review on iTunes. Thanks, and we'll see you in Journey Beyond Weight Loss.